Okay, so uh, I've got two situations here. We're going to do the uh, um, variation of data, and we're going to look at, in particular, the, the range, population variance, and the population standard deviation. So this is very important. Um, when we use this data, we use, or when we use variance, if you have all the data, you use population variance and population standard deviation. If you just have part of the data, there's another formula, which we'll talk about later, but it's sample variance and sample standard deviation. Very similar formulas, but one slight difference. We'll talk about that in the next video. But for now, range is just the big minus the little one. And so what I have here are two situations. I have the number of puppies produced uh, by Yorkies, uh, their dog, uh, a breed of dog, in each litter of, of her life. And so, you know, the range of this with a capital R is just 3 minus 1, which is 2. And then the same goes with the number of puppies produced by Black Lab in each litter of her life would be the range for that would just be 16 minus 3. Now, granted, I made this data up, but <laughs> of the dogs I've been around, this is pretty, pretty true. Um, so the range for the black lab is 13 puppies. And so um, that kind of tells us that the black lab puppies are spread out. You know, but what, what would have happened if the Yorkie puppy would have uh, had maybe uh, 10 in one in her last litter? Well, 10 minus 1 would have been 9, and then, then we'd think the Yorkie and the black lab were very similar. And so we got to come up with something more precise. And so what we come up with is um, variance and standard deviation. Whoops, not logarithms. So let's look at the uh, the Yorkie. So she had one puppy, then two, then two, then two, then two, then three. And, uh, yep, I got them all. And so what we do is uh, we come up with this um, formula, which is essentially the, di the distance formula, essentially, for variance and standard deviation. Now variance is represented by a sigma squared, lowercase sigma, and standard deviation, if you have the whole population, deviation, is represented by just the sigma. And so the formula for this um, kind of looks nasty. Oh, wrong one. I'm thinking of standard deviation. Is uh, the summation, the sum of your data point, the sum of all your data points minus the population mean squared divided by however many we have, the entire population. In our case, with this data, it's 6. And this might look kind of scary to you, but it's really not that bad. And then standard deviation is just the square root of that. So the square root of sigma squared. So once you get the answer, take the variance, you take the square root, and you've got it. And so here's what you do first. First off, we need to find mu, which is mean in our case. So the average of the data, what you're accustomed to with average of the data. So um, we got 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, 3 puppies. And so the average of this data would be just add them all up, which is 12. You know, 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 3 is 12 divided by the number um, of, of litters. We've had uh, six litters. And so mu in our case, or our mean, is 2. Okay. Then all you do is you take each data point, so 1 minus your mean, and then square it, plus 2 minus your mean squared, plus 2 minus your mean squared, plus uh, 2 minus your mean squared plus, and I think I got them all the 2's, or one more 2. There are four 2's, so one more 2 minus your 2 squared plus, 
3 minus your 2 squared. All divided by however many samples we have, and we have uh, 6 samples in this case. And so you, you, and again, this is 4 sigma squared. And so we'll go ahead and keep, keep on simplifying that. And so in our case, that would be 1 minus 2 is negative 1 squared plus 4 zeros squared. plus that 3 minus 2 squared, all divided by 6. And what's nice is the squared eliminates the, you know, the direction, the negative value. So negative 1 squared is just 1, plus 3 minus 2 squared is 1, and that's divided by 6. So our variation is 2 sixths, which reduces to 1 third. And with the rounding rules for variance and standard deviation, we always want to go one decimal beyond. We know that this, then our original data, we know that this is 0 0.33333 repeating. And so I would round that to 0 0.3, because that's one more decimal than our original data. Now, what's nice then is the um, standard deviation is just that square root of that which would be um, 0 0.58, which again, using our rounding rules, makes it 0, excuse me, 0 0.6. And so there is our standard deviation, and there is our variance. Okay, so let's look at the other set of puppies. So that's a pretty small standard deviation of variance, 0 0.3 and 0 0.6. So our other set of this darn thing, our other set of uh, puppies had, our black lab had three puppies the first time, then five, then nine, then 12, and then finally 16. So she only had five litters in her lifetime, but she had quite a few more and kind of spread out. That first time she didn't have very many. So again, you find this, you do the same thing. You find your, your mean, so mu in our case, is going to be 45 if you add those all up divided by only five this time and so our mean is nine so our variance would be three minus nine squared plus um, five minus nine squared plus nine minus nine squared plus twelve minus nine squared plus 16 minus 9 squared, all divided by um, however many we have, which is 5. So again, if we keep calculating that, keep on going, let me extend the page, that would be um, 6 squared plus 4 squared plus 0 squared plus 3 squared plus 7 squared divided by 5, and I'll keep going, and it, not to lose track of my variance symbol. So 36 plus 16 plus 0, um, and again that's negative 6 squared, but when we square it, I get, forgot about that, that would be positive, um, plus uh, 9 plus 49, all divided by 5. And just to show my calculations, and, just, and I'm also trying to show you that this isn't that bad. I mean, if you can multiply, add, multiply, divide, subtract, that kind of stuff, actually just add, multiply, and divide, you can figure out variance and standard deviation. And so our variance is 110 over 5, which actually comes out even to 22. Then our standard deviation, which is just the square root of that, is 4.69 and some more decimals. And so, again, one more decimal than we have than our data. We know that our standard deviation is 4.7. And you can see how much, you know, the data was way more spread out. But that black lab puppy went from 3 to 16 puppies, whereas our Yorkie only did 1 to 3. And lots of 2s, you know, she only had letters of 2 over and over and over again. And so, um, this gives us a way to compare the two and say, hey, a lab is going to produce probably a little more spread out data. Now, this is not a study I did. This is not 
true in any sense of the word. I mean, I just made these numbers up. But essentially, that hopefully that gives you an idea of what, what's happening here. The, the main thing you need to get out of this is if, if this looks familiar to you, it should. What you're doing is you're finding the, with standard deviation, I'll call it SD just because I'm running out of time. With standard deviation, you are finding the distance, the average distance, the average distance of all points, all measurements, from the mean. You know, how far away is every point from the mean, and what's the average of those distances? And so that is standard deviation. And uh, if, if you can understand standard deviation, variance, mean, median, mode, you have most of statistics licked because uh, everything is based off of these things. There's a lot more to it, but this is, this is the base. If you can get this stuff figured out, you're in good shape for statistics and learning it. That's what I love about it. You don't need a, a, a really heavy understanding of mathematics to get to um, some really cool things in statistics. So good luck. I hope this helps, and see you next time.